A lot of times when I'm teaching PowerShell, a lot of people get kind of, I don't know, I guess they kind of trip out where like at this stage of it, I'm like, hey man, well, let's mess with ISC and let's, let's try and write our own scripts. We can control R and start the ISC. I'll start ISC, it looks like this. This is the PowerShell environment that we're gonna use so that we can actually try and write some PowerShell code. In here, I'm gonna throw in just that line. Get event log, log name, application. Now I'm gonna throw that right there. Okay, and now right here, I'm just gonna run it. Do you see how the log file is showing up right here in the middle of the screen? So he's literally running the code. I'm gonna stop it right here. So this worked perfectly. That's exactly what I wanted. Well, now I'm gonna change it up a little bit. So if you take a look at what I've done, I've just created a variable called log name. Variable log name equals application. So it's everything you've already learned. Get event log, log name, and now what I would normally type in the word application, I've already got application as a variable log name. It goes right there. Export CLI XML, write it out to that log name XML. Okay, I'm gonna save this and I'm gonna call it grab logs. So this bad boy is literally called grab logs. So grab logs is going to do everything I taught you, except the variable, instead of me typing in the word application, and he's going to write it out to whatever this variable name is, it's going to be that variable name .xml, and that's where he's going to save it. So if I run this file, if you go look in that scripts folder, you can see that there's already an application log file in there. It did it, it ran perfectly, that's great. Well, now what we can do is we can say, well, let's, let's play with it a little bit. Let's make a parameter. So what that means is by default, if I don't specify something, it's gonna take application. But now the parameter is this variable log name. Parameter application, I've called it a param here. That's now becoming an argument to the script. Everything else is the same. Let me save it. Now I wanna jump over here. I wanna actually run that joker. Okay, now I'm running grab logs just like that. And well, actually that's not a good example because the file was already there. So let me get rid of the log file. Log file is gone. Now if I run grab logs, and now we look, there's a brand new application log, right? And it's zero bytes because the script's still running. Once the script is done running, then we'll see, boom, now it has a file size, 25 meg. Okay, so the grab logs file ran, okay? All right, so I'm gonna dump that log file again. Log file's gone. Now, let's try it with the parameter stuff I was talking about. So I'll go dash L, and now if I type, hit tab, you see how it spells out log name? So the parameter is the log name. And now maybe I want to do system. And now you see how it's built a system log. Okay, and then same thing. Once the script is done running, you'll see it's going to go from zero bytes and it'll have a real file size. Boom, now it's got a real file size. It's no longer zero bytes. 
Okay, now a lot of people look at that and they go, Joe, that's kind of pointless. I mean, you're not really saving any real time, you know, because you could just say get event log. But, you know, we're building here. So now what if I want to give it more than one parameter? So you can look here, now you've got two parameters. First parameter is log name, second parameter is facts. So if I save that joker, now when I'm at that command prompt, now if I do dash L, it'll spell out log name. If I do dash F, it'll spell out facts. But now whatever parameters I wanna throw in there, I just keep making those additional parameters. Too easy. So, so easy. So the same way you did log name, you wanna give it additional parameters, throw them right in there. I mean, if you look at that syntax, you're like, that's it? Like, yeah, bro, that's it. So I'm like, okay, well, where can I take that? Now what you can do, you can say, let's throw in how to get help on the script. So now I can get help on grab logs. Check it out. Now, because I've built it that way, get help actually works. So now you see the log name takes an object and then facts takes an object. So then you can be like, okay, well, let me change this. So now here's the change I'm going to make. What I've done is I've said that this is now a string. So now I can do the same thing, get help on it. And now you can see that the log name parameter is a string now instead of an object. And you can make it an integer, you can make it a float, you can make it a, a whatever else you want. Like it's literally that easy to type, typecast, type, you know, or decal, declare, declare what that thing is. That's just how easy it is. Okay, now if the string can be an array, you just throw in the boxes. Check this out. Now the string is an array. So now there can be multiple items here instead of just one item there. So what if you want the log name to be like three different log files, right? Application, system, and security. Now you can do that because now you made an array because of that box right there. Now you can make parameters required if you want. So all this does is this just says, you know what, this parameter is mandatory. You have to specify a log name. You cannot run this script without specifying a log name, right? Parameter mandatory equals true. You have to do it. So you do command with binding and you say, hey man, this parameter, it's mandatory. When you go to run it, if you don't have that, that thing just flat out will not run. See that? I tried to run it without the parameters. He's like, look, man, you have to supply the values for this parameter. So now you have to throw in, okay, man, this thing needs, let's go with the security log. And now that that parameter is supplied, now it'll actually run. There's the security log. Once it's done running, it'll go from zero bytes. It'll finally have a total value. Now that we've got that, we've got the last part. Check it. So I throw in this little less than sign and a hash. I give it a synopsis. 
All that is is a short definition. I give it a description. I explain the parameter. And then I write the syntax of how to run it. Give it a little example. Here's what it looks like. And then the actual code. So I jump right into my ISC. Bam, just like that. Check it when I get help on it. Get help on it. Now it's starting to look like a real PowerShell script, isn't it? Yeah, it's coming together, huh? Now, what if I throw a dash full on that bad boy? Dash full. Now, you've got the real deal holy feel right there. Check this out. So he's like, hey, here's how to run me. Description, parameters, check out that parameter stuff. He's like, look, man, here's how my syntax looks. See all that? Here's what's required. Shh. What? Sit down, son. Grown folks is talking. This is making me look like I is a coder.